Apple is continuing that favorite gadget and projects products. We got the iPhone, the iPad, the Mac book and all of that stuff that we are now addicted to. Apple, one of our favorite companies to enjoy their products are standing in the way of workers unionizing. Over the past two weeks, managers at Apple's roughly 270 US retail outlets held meetings with staff members to discuss the risk of unionization and provide a planned update on bargaining between the company and the first unionized store, a location in Tosin. Maryland, ain't that something trying to scare people from unionizing? And Apple withdrew new benefits. Can y'all believe this? From unionized locations, drawing outcry from labor activists. So this is punishment for people engaging in organizing. And that is why we really need the PRO Act to have passed in the 117th General Assembly. You all may recall me talking about that ad nauseum. On this show, we're gonna continue to talk about how this Congress and that president failed to get that bill passed so that workers can organize without fear of what is happening to them at the hands of Apple. And the Department of Justice needs to step in here. Now there comes a time where the federal government has to use the carrot and the stick. Right now, what Apple's doing, they need to use a stick on their behind. Now Apple's first unionized workers say the company is withholding new benefits. Organizers at Apple's first unionized store in the US say the company is withholding details about the benefits is given other workers and spreading misinformation. Of course they're doing that because they want to divide and conquer. Managers told workers that the union representing Tosin employees, International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers or IAM is requesting dues that amount to 1.5% of pay. Managers said that that amount of money could quickly add up over time and the employees who don't comply with the payment could be terminated within a month based on the union's proposal. Man, this this ain't nothing but divide and conquer and using scare tactics. And so these anti-union efforts have so far appeared to work because only two, Sharon, only two Apple stores have unionized, and that's Tolson and Oklahoma City. It is a shame, and when you mention the federal government, what I hear is organized bullying and retaliation here that should be dealt with under the law. It really should be. Right. And every time these companies, you know, whether it's Starbucks or anybody else, gets threatened, you know, with unionization, you tend to get this this other lie. And sometimes it comes from the top where they say, Senator, oh no, we're we're committed, we're doing this, we want to do this, we value our workers. Stop putting out your statements and lies and just pay people and give them benefits. That's again what's fair. It's just that simple, Sharon. And some reports have come out showing that some of these companies spend more on lobbyists mm-hmm. to stop unionization. Then they and, and they could use that same money. And as you just said, just give your employees a raise and let them organize. What's wrong with people who help your company to grow and keep it functioning? What's wrong with them being able to sit across the table from management and collectively bargain for better benefits, better wages and better work conditions? It just does not make a whole lot of sense to me. And that's why we need the feds to step in because it's happening too often when too many corporations feel as though they can get away with this because there has not been any repercussions and consequences. That's why I believe we need mamas running this stuff. I'm talking about real mamas. Amen, big mamas, all that. Big mamas, yeah, (laughs) running this stuff. Mm Because they would make sure there were some repercussions and consequences. And you'd only have to hear it one time. One time. Big mama tells you, and then she says, well, I can show you better than I tell you. It's not gonna be repeated. Ain't gonna be (laughs) repeated. (laughs) Yes, big mamas all over the world need to come on and run this thing. So, you know, but there is some good news. So Sharon and I were laying out, you know, what's happening in this country right now when it comes to unions, but we're gonna throw out some good news right now. Check out this headline from Bloomberg. Unions report key membership gains in 2022 filings. So even though you have corporations such as Starbucks and Apple and Amazon and others who are trying to stand in the way of workers unionizing, Unions are still growing. More than two dozen groups surveyed saw gains. Annual union disclosures to the US Department of Labor offer the most detailed look yet yet at how labor groups have flourished and struggled in post pandemic economy. More than 50 groups that filed 
membership and financial disclosures in the past month reported a collective net membership increase of 3%. And various groups saw increases, but two saw dips. And that's okay, we're gonna keep on pushing. Let's put up this graph right here. Union membership, the percentage change from 2021 to 2022. We see the United Farm Workers dipped a little bit, but everybody else is, is going in the right direction. And we hope that the United Farm Workers, hell, we need to make sure the farm workers are taken care of. Hello, somebody, uh, make sure that they are going in the right direction. So unionization, whether or not you are in the union, not folks, Unions help to lift wages of every other body, okay? Every other worker in this country. So we need to be in support of that.